Previously on Unreal and FX. Unreal Engine is free to use. I chose the Games category and this blank project. Use this drop down to select Landscape Mode. How cool is that? Time to render, I think. Hey, and welcome to part 4 in this series where I'm learning how to use Unreal through the lens of someone who's only used After Effects. Shortly after posting the first video in this series, YouTuber and author Faldor DM'd me to ask, what are filmmakers without the volume using Unreal for? Well, as I see it, if you need a 3D environment, or even a 2D environment, then the assets in Quixels and the lighting control makes it the easiest solution I've seen if you want a landscape. Even if it's just looking out a window, the amount of control and potential for realism is pretty amazing. And then of course you can add green screen and moving cameras. AI image generation could have some of those claims, but it is a different and less satisfying alternative. Returning to our project, for the moment we'll leave it on the opening level view, because we need to enable a couple of plugins, and these require a restart of Unreal, so there's no point sending anything else up. So go to Edit, Plugins, and in the pop-up type Movie. The plugins filter show all the ones with Movie in their title, Check the boxes next to Movie Render Queue and Movie Render Queue Additional Passes. You'll get a warning about the second one being in beta, or maybe it won't be in beta because you're watching this in 2028. How are the water wars going? Once you've hit Restart Now and Unreal has shut down and reopened, you can then go to File, Recent Levels to load in your actual level. Next, we need to create a camera. Using the Get Content drop-down, navigate to Cinematic Cine Camera Actor. This places a virtual camera in the scene. You can either use the Mini Preview window, or you can go to Perspective Cine Camera Actor and view the scene through the camera itself. You can now use the viewport controls and you'll move the camera. And of course, once you've settled on a shot, there's nothing stopping you adding additional models, changing the landscape, or adding extra foliage to the scene. At no point until you hit Render is anything fixed. Next, we need to add the equivalent of a timeline. In Unreal, that's called a level sequence. Click on the Movie Camera drop-down and choose Add Level Sequence. You'll be prompted to save an object. And the Level Sequence panel opens at the bottom of your screen. Using the Plus Track option, navigate to Actor, then Sequencer and select our Cine Camera Actor. And looking not unlike After Effects, here's all the properties of the camera, including the transform properties. And here you can set keyframes for the position and rotation. And you can see my sequence has defaulted to 30 FPS and 150 frames long. I can extend that by clicking on this value and typing in a value in frames that I want the animation to last for. Like AE, there's a cute calculator so I can type 30 times 10 seconds, and it will sort out the calculation for me. Obviously this is more useful if you're dealing with different, less rounded frame rates. I'll now drag the current time indicator to the end of the sequence and reposition my camera. This is a little trickier than in After Effects, and setting the location values resets the changes you've made to rotation but you can use this icon to set auto keyframes. And pretty similar to After Effects, you can also delete keys, as they're called, and you can move them as needed to create your sequence. The Curves editor gives you a lot more control over the movement, especially if you engage toggle-weighted tangents on the keyframes. I do find tweaking the animation a lot harder in Unreal Engine than in Blender, C4D, or After Effects for that matter, but it is possible eventually to get the results you need. Importing or exporting camera moves requires a whole video in itself, so sorry I'm skipping over that here. Mainly because I'm still trying to refine a method. But once you're happy with your camera moves and you've set the light just how you wanted, it's time to export. Click on the clapperboard icon to open the movie render queue panel, and then click on the unsaved config text. This opens an area sort of similar to that area in the render queue where you choose formats and quality, and you can change the file name format and so on. 
Watch out for the frame rate though. Unreal ignores the 30 FPS and defaults to 24 FPS. Checking the custom frame rate box allows you to change that. You can now use the plus setting option to add additional settings. The tooltips show you what the options are. And while the default is for JPEG sequence, you can change that to PNG, bitmap, and so on. Once you're comfortable, click accept, and then choose render locally. There's a brief pause as it compiles the level, and then that's it. Once complete, jump into After Effects, which feels a lot more comfortable, and go to File, Import, Multiple Files, and find the first image in the sequence. Make sure Import a JPEG sequence is checked, and click Import. When the dialog box pops up again, this time find the extra passes you rendered. And when all are imported, click Done. Drag your image sequence onto the new composition icon, to create a composition with the resolution and length of your comp. If something is a little off, such as it imported at 24 FPS, right click on the footage in the project panel and choose Interpret Footage Main. And there, you can correct for that. I imported a lighting only pass, which you can use with blending modes to deepen the image. A couple of last notes, Unreal Engine's defaults for video should all be fine, but I did run into an issue when passing over a detailed rock on the moon's surface animation. See how it sort of redraws? I found lots of advice online, all pointing out that this was an LOD or level of detail issue. Basically, when something is far away, a lower quality version is used. Nothing I did could fix this, until I realized the issue was the rock was part of the foliage. Even then, no changes I made affected it, so I simply placed a model of the same rock in the same position, just slightly larger. Might be the simplest fix, but if you're having trouble, then LOD or level of detail is the thing to search for. And for detailed information on the different render passes possible, this documentation contains examples and explanations. It's linked in the description below. You can get lost here quite easily, so I'm still doing most of my processing in After Effects using my Quick Cheats template to deepen the colours, add noise, that sort of thing.